Hey guys, Chris here with Off Grid Utah. Just wanted to show you the most simplistic form of uh, solar power and energy, energy creation that I could come up with. These are all parts you could buy. You have to do almost no connected fittings. I had a subscriber ask me to build a solar cart for him. We priced it out and the cost of things are just kind of going through the roof lately. Um, and I don't like the state of the world. I think it's important to be able to make a little bit of energy. And so this, with that being said, this little setup here is designed to give you about, well, it's designed to hook up to a one to 200 watt solar power system. Okay, so if you put 200 watts on this, you'll max out this controller. This is a Renogy uh, Wanderer. It's kind of nice because it has some USB ports. And all we need to do I'm gonna cover all these devices and you'll see that it will all just plug in, but all we really need to do is plug most of this stuff together. So I have this box so that it can be mounted to a wall so later on I could add some outlets to it. So I like to drill holes here and just zip tie uh, this controller right here. And I like to leave a little bit of space here so I can punch a hole down in here and drag all the wires back through later on. But for this video, this is an SAE extension cord. Notice how it's got hermetically sealed components, so I think it'll go about 20 feet. And that would be the extension cable that you would run between uh, this power box and the controller. And it would plug in to this type of harness. And these are called MC4 connectors. They plug directly into the solar panel, okay? But between the solar panel so imagine we walked up to the solar panel and you saw this little guy. This is the fuse holder, okay? It's called an inline fuse, an MC4 inline fuse. You need to buy one of these, they're about 10 bucks. The fuse is probably five or 10 bucks. And for this system, you need a 10, um, a 10 amp fuse, okay? If you can find a seven, then find a seven when you buy one of these, just Google it. But what happens is that'll plug directly into the pigtail on the positive side of the solar panel. Then we'll plug this positive into that. Okay. And then this negative right here plugs into the negative of the solar panel. And that leaves us with this. And this is kind of important right here. So these don't just plug in and work properly because notice how you have red and black and you have red and black. Well, what happens when I plug this together? you'll see that there's a red wire and it's crossed over the black wire. So now, because we have a crossover, we have to use a crossover plug and it has to go on one side or the other. And this is what the crossover plug looks like. So what it does is it will keep the reds together and the black cables together. So if you take this, you plug it in here, you can see that now. And now watch when I plug this back in. This will keep it all in line. It does a little crossover between the colors inside. And now you can see that the black wires stay connected through that. And it doesn't matter which end of the cable you do that on. So now we have our cable that we're gonna plug directly into the solar panel. If you buy a Renogy 100 watt panel, this will plug directly to the panel, okay? Put the crossover in and that way it's kind of sitting out of the sun. Make sure when you buy an SAE harness that it is, the, the coating is UV protected, okay? And this is size 14 wire or it's size 12. We could look, zoom in really close, but either way, a 14 will handle 15 amps, right? And a 12 will handle 20. And we're only gonna run 5.25 amps if we wire two 100 watt panels in series utilizing this controller okay so just worry about plugging one panel in for now you don't have to worry about series parallel rules if you don't know about those you can google it but essentially this red will plug in the red of the panel that black will plug into the black now you've got this plug and the right polarities so positives on the red and black is on there and then it's just going to plug into this device and this is an sae socket so you'll take this socket here and plug it in right and now you have a two pull disconnect which is what you're supposed to have for a solar panel and the reason is is this controller when it's hooked up 
um, you have to hook it to the battery first and then hook it up to the panel. If you run power from the panel that's out in the sun, it's making energy. It does something to the transistors in here and it can either short it or forward bias something. I don't know exactly. I haven't gone through the engineering, but it makes it so it can't take a charge on the battery. So if you plug the panels in first and then the battery in second and it won't work, it could break the unit, but it could also just make it not work. That happened on one of my friends. So we unhooked both of them, plugged the battery back in. This came up and then we plugged the solar panel in and everything was just fine. So just realize it has to go in that order. That's why you want to have a two pole disconnect, whether it's a breaker or a switch or whatever, but it's best to be able to pull both of these out and of course have it fused. So the reason I have this device is because we need to drill a hole in the side of that box, right? And this guy will attach with some silicone and some screws and it'll keep that box weather tight. So that's kind of the idea there. And you go, well, how does this hook up? Well, it's always sad when you buy a fancy cable. You can buy these pigtails without the plug, but I found in a kit of two of these, they're 15 to 20 bucks, depending on the diameter that you buy. And sometimes you only get the plugs or you only get the socket. So if you buy them for 15 bucks or 20 bucks and you get a kit of two and you cut it in half like this, then give me just a sec here. Then you get both, right? We can do some cutting action on the camera. I just chomp them, right? So that's what you want is you want to be able to make your dollar stretch, right? So now we ended up with an extra socket and a plug. Anyways, somebody's probably out there yelling, don't cut that thing, but that's okay. Twofer, we got a twofer on that one. So now that we have this cable here and it's fused up line by the panel, when it comes through this box and attaches to the side, all it has to do is screw in to these panels right here. And to do that, we just need a little mini screwdriver. You can see my, my tooling selection over here. I'm gonna grab this guy and my wire strippers. These are pretty sweet. Um, there's the part number and the website to buy it from. A shameless plug, I don't get any credit, but I love this tool. So the reason is if you've used a normal pair of wire strippers, you can see why right now, why I love this tool. Okay, so that's all it really takes to remove the cable, strip the wire. Now, it also has a little cutter right there. So I can shorten that up if I need to. I'm not gonna worry about it so much in this video, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna pull that off the camera for just a sec so I can get those in the pocket. Oh, that's one more thing I need to remind you on these. When they ship from the factory, and they even have a warning in their documentation that you need to open these terminals. See that? I'll do that on the next one, too. You'll see it start to climb open. It clamps by pulling it the other way, so lefty, loosey, ratty, tidy, right? And here, I'm loosening them. Got the box open. Now let's go ahead and do that again. So we'll put the negative in the negative. Make sure none of these little hairs cross over from one pocket to the other. I'm gonna pull that up so I can really double check that. Yeah, it looks good. Cause that'll cause a short. That little wire might just burn out, but it also might burn out your controller cause it's not fused. So remember fusing really does help the controller, but it's really there to protect the wire. So we're always fusing to protect the wire. And obviously our fuse is always going to be the weakest link in any kind of electrical system. We're not protecting the device, we're protecting the wire. Anyways, okay, so that's all that needs to be connected. And now, when I plug this in, right, I am... Ugh, it's kind of hard to do that around the camera. But now I'm hooked up to a solar panel, and I can quickly walk up and I can disconnect it. Then we just need to do the same on the other one. So let's go ahead and, in fact, I'll use the cutter on this one. And we'll just cut it right down the middle. Okay. And let's go ahead and take this and we'll cut it right there. And I'll strip it one more time just so you can kind of see that. Love that tool. And then essentially, we do the same thing. And we plug this one in, red to the positive, right? Red's going to go right here to the positive. And that black one to the negative. 
And then right here, you plug in, and there's another crossover to keep the red and the black wires. And then these two hoops right here, they hook right to the battery. And then I have an inline fuse holder right here. So this is an SAE battery harness, and it has a 10 amp right here on the inside. It should have a 10 amp, that might be a 15, but a 15 will be safe on that wire. But I would say throw a 10 in there anyways, that's what they're recommended for this controller. And that's all you really need to hook this panel up I'll finish this out, but that's all the wiring connections, and you'll be making energy once you hook that other harness back up to a battery.